No, I'm just a joke. Just laugh at me, not with me. Come on. That's it. I've seen... Yeah, fine. Fine, laugh at me. I don't care. I don't care. Right, it's Thursday. It's 10 a.m. Hey, it's one minute. It's what? Oh, no, it's 10 a.m. now. That was close. We were live for one... About 10 seconds. Oh, Jesus. Phone's off on set. Phone's off on set. Sorry, but I turned it off. Outrageous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Coffee and Memes. Uh, Squiff's back. What are hey. you doing down there? I'm just... Oh, kill me with this! <laughs> I'm so sorry. God almighty. Look, I'll play the intro and then we'll see about we'll yeah. see about this. Yeah, it's not my life. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slug. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and... All of that, it, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, one minute past ten. Uh, it's Threshold.fm, it's YouTube, it's Facebook, it's all across the flat earth. It's coffee and memes. Scraffington's in the house. Yo. Back, back again with the ill behaviour, with the uh, terrible phone manner. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely sorry, disgusting. everyone. Sorry. Someone's got to ruin it. Laughing at me, laughing at my cough, laughing at my illness, laughing at my attire, laughing at me spilling coffee on my jumper. I'm a terrible person, but it's why I'm back here, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have anyone nice or uh, no decent human There's beings. no entertainment in that, really. Yeah, garbage humans only, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's the new rule. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Anna. <laughs> how's things? Are you okay? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but okay, I'm functioning. Yeah, like functioning, okay. Yeah, May you're, at, you're <clears throat> out of bed and dressed, and that's that's I what counts, out. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lord alive. Right, look, what have we got in the news today? General bits and bobs. Uh, flat earthers plan trip to Antarctica to reach the end of the world and prove bizarre conspiracy theory that the planet isn't round. That was a really overextended headline from the sun there. That didn't, yeah... Oh, the Sun reported that. It's a really long headline too. Yeah, just flat earthers planned trip to reach the ice wall. Yeah, well, anyway, look, Christ on a bike. What else have we got? Um, yeah, so the Weather Spoons app, which uh, you only found out. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, uh, that <clears throat> <laughs> there, there is such a thing as, in case anyone else didn't know, there is such a thing as the Weather Spoons app, and it means you can order food and drinks to your table without having to get up off your fat ass. Does that mean you could, oh, you'd need a table number. You couldn't yeah. be on the bus then and be like, get me a pint ready, spat. Get it in there. Yeah, I guess. Uh, no, oh. no, I'm, I'm sadly not. Oh, you do me. actually have to have your fat be ass there. sat down at the table <laughs> <laughs> before they'll pick you the drinks. Um, so that exists mm. just as a bit of sort of context. As Yeah, it's, it's uh, where the world's going. Yeah. Um, and the Weatherspoons app is now being used by financial dominatrixes to glean free booze from uh, sort of cucks, I guess, uh, online. Uh, then they're referred to as pay pigs. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Find yourself a willing pay pig and you can get a load of free food and drinks at Spoons. Uh, that's Robert Jackman of um, The Vice magazine. Does that count as cheating? Well, if they buy you drinks. Yeah. In the club, in the spoons. <laughs> in the spoons. Just all the boys buying the girls' drinks in the spoons. You'll find me in the spoons. Yeah. <laughs> Exploiting <With> cucks. <laughs> <laughs> Exploiting all the cucks. Yeah. Um, you know, buy me a round of drinks if you got the bucks. <laughs> Come oh my on. God. Yes. Just, free, just straight off the mental. Um, what else have we got? Uh, l oh, yeah. Look, I've been saving these up for you because I knew you'd be into them. Life as a male escort. Uh, one man wanted to sniff my feet while I had sex with his wife. More cucks. <laughs> doubling, doubling down on the cucks so far. Cucks squared. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh God. Um, former Westboro Baptist Church member becomes Instagram model after being banished from the cult. Oh, she was kicked out. She didn't leave willingly. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. Right. So she's Did she gone. get banned from being too thick? <laughs> she's Possible. Thick. Jeez. I mean, yeah, she's... Um, She's squatting for Jesus. I, look, that was that was your quote earlier. I'm sorry to steal it. <laughs> <It's> all right, <laughs> it was a good one. It's yours. You can have it. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, 
Why won't you come in? Come on, let's uh, what's Doc? No, that's not right, is it? Get her there. There she is. Um, yeah, she's um, she's gone. Basically, she's done a complete U-turn. She's got quite the bobs. She definitely has quite the bobs. She's got quite the thighs. Um, she's yeah, she's fed up with lifting placards and is now lifting <laughs> lifting barbells. Or those placards were quite heavy. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, she. I don't know. I mean, I feel like she might be on the roids. It's possible. She's. I mean, she's got quite a thick jawline. She's, um, yeah, she's thick. She's thick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well done. That, that takes a lot of work. You know, she's got six pack abs. She's got more abs than I have. Lord alive. Um, what else we got? Uh, a woman makes 120 grand a year selling nude pictures with help from her mum. Thanks, mum. Cheers, mum. Uh, yeah, she, the mum even takes the raunchy ones. Is that the uh, child friendly porn that those mums were going on about the other week? Yeah, so they're not making porn for kids, they're making it with kids. Although, luckily, this kid is 22. <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah, it's where it starts, though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 fuck's sake sorry uh, <laughs> it's a slippery slope yeah it is okay uh people in scotland are more likely to search for redheads and kilts on pornhub your boyfriend's scottish isn't he he is and we need to have a conversation when i get home yeah is he full-blown scottish like kilt and, and ginger hair um his beard's ginger yeah yeah well there you go ginger <laughs> is he real proper groundskeeper willy then yeah. <laughs> god bless him <laughs> Um, it's got the whole um, proportional difference in popularity compared to worldwide of the categories viewed more in Scotland, and um, yeah, they're they're into they're into British porn. Uh, <laughs> I guess they're one of these dandy wee Yankees on the porn. <laughs> I give me strong British ladies, <laughs> British lasses, strong British lasses. Hey. <laughs> Ginger of hair and ample of tut. <laughs> Haggis. Yeah. Uh, the next popular one they search for is smoking. Like, by a, a margin, 152% more than the rest of the world. Smoking during... What's that about? I get. I don't know. Uh, then mature, then redhead. So really, they're looking for a really British... Really unhealthy women. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. And then lesbian bondage, fetish, vintage, celebrity, and MILF. If you could combine all of them, you get Lindsay Lohan. No, hold on. Who's, uh, who's a, a Lindsay Br- Lohan with a, an Br- accent? Yeah, in putting on an sepia. accent, having a fag. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, darling. Yeah, you wanna... Vintage, is that like full bush? I guess so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. vintage? Uh, oh, I mean, old porn, maybe like old '80s stuff, like actual <laughs> oldie world. Of, yeah, huge <laughs> bushes. The Charleston. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see a bit of ankle, you know, <laughs> all the good stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's got it's just a bit obvious now, isn't it? Porn, like, yeah, yeah. I know what's going to happen. Like, oh, are you going to see more than the ankle? Oh, a little bit of calf. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, God bless them. Um, uh, alligators were given ketamine and headphones to study dinosaur hearing. Why? Uh, well, we'll find out. Scientists. I think this might fall under scientists. Uh, did it because they could, but never stopped to think whether or not they should. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, like, I often think about how far advanced we'd be with everything if someone in the office was just paid to ask why. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to graft a human ear on a mouse, but why? But why though? <laughs> why though? <laughs> yeah, but why though? Uh, Bradley Gunn, uh, Bradley Gunn, the sober raver, says his time as a raver has come to an end. Uh, well, Bradley, I will say, a couple of pingers, you might get another few years out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Little little dab dab here or there. <laughs> Just saying, you know, they're, 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 they're used at raves for a reason. Get some nose clams and uh, rock up to the techno rave. Yeah, come on, buddy. Bradley Gunn is an individual uh, who has built a reputation for himself as one of the world's most beloved dance music revelers um, and has announced that his time as Bradley Gunn raver has come to an end. The story of Bradley Gunn's raver's uh, rise to stardom uh, is an inspiration 
Living with Asperger's syndrome, Bradley has often found himself struggling in social environments and dealing with feelings of self-consciousness. Thankfully, he found a solution, the warm embrace of club clubland. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? So uh, hang out with a bunch of people on drugs. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow, it's not more accepting than people on drugs. Yeah, c- yeah. can't argue with that. No. Uh, donning his iconic rave goggles, leggings, self-branded t-shirt. Sounds like me. Uh, <laughs> minus the goggles, I guess. Leggings? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I trained jiu-jitsu in leggings, so it's just... I just, just, feel, just feel me in them. It's okay. It's 2019. It's They're called fine. Megans now. Uh, yeah, well, they, we actually refer to them as spats. Um, but I but I use the leggings uh, to strangle people. Well, they're <laughs> across my legs, which then strangle people. So I guess it's, you know, Pre-people. more more manly. Um, self-branded t-shirt promoting, promoting his mantra, love, life and rave. The tireless, sober raver made himself into an internet sensation, traversing the globe to connect with party people, speak about the mental health benefits of raving, and to cut the rug alongside... Some of the world's most famous disc jockeys. Bradley Gun Raver helped countless people uh, retouch bass with their love of music. Uh, bless him. Yeah, that's uh, actually quite cute. It is. Mm. Uh, in a Facebook post, Bradley Gun explains his reason for leaving uh, his adopted name behind. Oh, what well, is this? Not his real name. He's a phony! No. A big fat phony! <laughs> phony. <laughs> no. um, he, feels, he no longer feels satisfied just dancing. And the amazing thing he created has, in a way, become his own prison. Mm. Oh, no. Being a sober raver has become a ball and chain around his leg. Uh, he goes on to reminisce about how grateful he was for the experience as Bradley Gunn Raver, but needs to move on to the next chapter of his life. Um, here's to you, Bradley Gunn. Your infectious dance floor energy and achievements remain an inspiration to its all. God bless him. Mm. What's next? I mean, look, I am just saying, a little, little dab dab here or there. <laughs> Might yeah, could, get get you, could get you get another couple of years. Definitely. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, you know, yeah. I God mean, in comparison to everything else that <laughs> we'll be talking about today, that's pretty wholesome. Yeah, that's my heartwarming wholesome one for the week. <laughs> uh, and then it goes downhill from here. It really does, actually. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. This one is slightly wholesome. Um, let this man build a huge wood bong for the town of Wooden Bong. You wholesome. monsters. <laughs> wholesome. <laughs> wholesome. A bunch of killjoys. I tried to... I tried to Paul Jason's thoughts of voice. A bunch of killjoys. I tried to prevent Paul Pearson from fulfilling his destiny. Well, imagine my shock. <laughs> imagine my shock. The white liberals are preventing him. And, and who's at your expense... <laughs> <laughs> the parody's too easy. Oh, it's great. Like, I might buy a world map just to parody it because it's too funny. Like I smell a sketch. Yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> uh, is, be- Islamic tarantulas from outer space are coming to live in your front room and you know who's going to be paying for it. <laughs> And liberals <laughs> think that it's a good... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, yeah. A bunch of killjoys cool are trying to prevent Paul Pearson from fulfilling his destiny. Uh, this is River Donahay from uh, Vice Magazine. He's reporting on this. Paul Pearson is a simple man with a simple dream. It's a humble dream. An achievable dream, a dream he shares. Uh, by his estimation, with hundreds of thousands of noble dreamers. Um, <laughs> it is the dream of a humongous bong. Uh, there he is, stood next to the bong. Uh, it's taller than him, but he looks quite short. It's probably, that bong is probably my height. Pearson lives in a small town of Wooden Bong, Australia. Uh, a town that inexplicably does not yet have a namesake Wooden Bong standing proudly in its town centre. Thankfully, Pearson has a plan to change all of that. Uh, if, if the town's other lame ass residents will let him, <laughs> are these lame ass residents? Is he from there? Uh, yeah, he lives there. Oh. Um, the Australian, uh, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation (ABC) reports. He says, "Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, mate, I've had an interest in bong making and art. Uh, I've been doing it all my f- life, mate." Uh, he's now aiming at what would undoubtedly be the pinnacle of his long bong building career. 
<laughs> making an absolutely massive one for the town out of wood. Uh, Pearson launched a petition uh, to gin up support. Is that a term? It G- is now. Gin up support for the thing. Gin up support for the thing. <laughs> Hoping to convince folks that aside from being a fucking masterpiece, the likes of which the world has never seen, uh, the, gar- <laughs> the gargantuan pipe would bring a much needed tourist revenue to Woodenbong. Most important question, will it be functional? Well, it's got to be, hasn't it? I mean, presumably, but, uh, you know, the ganja, the, the evil ganja weed, you know, the devil's lettuce, the chronic, <laughs> you know, the herb. Um, it, uh, it's not legal, is it, in Australia, or is it? Who knows? <coughs> I know, clearly. Um, <clears throat> tourism is our only option for survival in this dying village. Oh, sorry. Tourism's our only an option for survival, mate. In this dying village, mate. It's just full of people that are an absolute fucking disgrace, mate. You're a sexual terrorist. A wild look on your face. So a village is just going to start breaking bad just to make a bit of money. Seems so, yeah. Unfortunately, Pearson's fellow townspeople don't see him for the modern day Da Vinci he is. And the killjoys are fighting to keep him from fulfilling his destiny. Uh, I haven't spoken... I have spoke one person, mate, that thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> Get the hint. <laughs> Not a sec. Like, I literally go around the whole village like, mate, well, I've got this fucking crazy idea, mate. Like, we're living in fucking wooden bong, mate, but we ain't even got a wooden bong in the town square. How about a build one for us? And they're like, no, nah, mate. Nah, mate, yeah, I think, I don't know, like, all don't right, know about that. you're obviously smoking something, mate, but uh, I, I don't know who you are, I don't know what your agenda is. Please get off my porch. Oh, I don't appreciate your <laughs> politics, and I think you're going to have to leave. My wife is visibly upset, as you can see, <laughs> she's got tears streaming down her, her big old face, and I'd like you off my property. Why don't you, like, get, get off my property or I'll set the fucking lingos on you, mate. I haven't spoken. I haven't spoken to one person. Thinks it's a good idea. Chris Reed, the head of local fundraising group, told the New York Times, "We do not want to promote drug use. It's quite a conservative community." Uh, Major Daniel Maholland told the Times, "But Pearson is undeterred. According to the Times, he's planning to present his big bong idea to a wooden bong tourism council this week." Wow, I'm hyped for him. God bless him. Uh, and just how big is big, you ask? Well, Pearson hasn't hammered out the specifics. Oh, but he told ABC that he wants it taller than a 50-foot statue called the Big Marino. Uh, so it would be pretty goddamn huge. Wow, that is a, a plus 50-foot bong. Incredible. For now, the Big Bong is still no more than a big dream. Pearson has his work cut out if he wants to get the townspeople on board. And that's before he starts the actual work of figuring out how to make a wooden water pipe the size of a building. How's he going to... He can't build it by himself. You just fucking watch him. Where this do you man, get the manpower? Pearson, <laughs> he is the manpower. He's a one-man wolf pack. He's an army. He's a, he's a menace. <laughs> he definitely is a menace. <laughs> he needs stopping. He's, uh, he's got issues. No, he's all right. He's fine by me. I mean, you've got to have a project, haven't you? Sounds like it's a sort of sleepy town. Probably not much goals. to do. Yeah, <laughs> maybe if they had like a youth club or something. Or, uh, I don't know, we could get into that. Pat, has he considered playing Fortnite? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that's probably worse than building a bong, to be honest. You reckon? This is more detrimental <laughs> to society. Speaking with ABC, he shrugged off all that with the casual, with casual, e- with the casual ease you'd expect from a man dedicating his life to building a giant wooden bong for a town named Wooden Bong. Uh, I don't think I need to conv- convince people, mate. It's pretty an obvious, mate. Uh, Come on, wooden bong, embrace your fate. Imagine the sweet, sweet sound of chiming cash registers overflowing with tourism dollars and allow it to soothe whatever hesitations you might have about living in the shadow of a gigantic weed apparatus from here on out. How's that going to attract, though? You're going to go to the other side of the world and just bump into a bunch of people from Bristol? Yeah, it's going to attract ganja tourism, which is basically going to be just a load of smelly gribos that turn up and just sort of hang about the place. They haven't got money. The sort of ganja tourists ain't got money. <laughs> That's very true. Come on, like you know, maybe if you could make it. Uh, Their parents do though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it might be all right. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, the dankest gods have spoken, and to Pearson, uh, they say this: "Upon this rock, you will build our massive bong." Please let him answer the call. Uh, so, what do you think, Pearson? Do you like him? 
I wouldn't want my town represented by a giant bong. Just would would you let him date your daughter? No. I've got a video of him here. Come on, buddy. Oh. There he is. He's working on a sort of smaller version of it. Yeah, it's just sanding it down. Well, there's no voiceover on this. Is he going to speak? A bong is a smoking implement. Much like a cup is a vessel for water. This one was created from a wooden vase from Fiji. Unsure what type of... Fiji? Okay. It's nope. from a part of Australia I've never heard the accent from. Yeah, what? Yeah. Okay. Must be a... Oh, what's the word for... Must be a bogan? It doesn't look like one. I mean, he's a bloody... Uh, uh, well... Um, he looks like he goes to Boomtown. It's a ladies bong for ladies. Oh, God. No, he's 100%. La la right, you're gendering bongs now, are you? That's problematic. What is this giant bong supposed to represent the patriarchy? He assumed the bong's gender. That's problematic. That is a disgrace. You're killing me with this Right, I've had enough of him. He's a deeply problematic individual. I want no, I want He's no more to do with him. definitely not dating my daughter or son. No way. <laughs> no way. Uh, I can't believe you've gendered your children. That is, that I said or oh, son. Oh, Just okay. covering all the bases. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, let's play some shoe throwers. Come on, we're uh, 20 minutes in. No shoes have been thrown yet. Hey, wow. We've got good shoe throwing news, though, coming up <laughs> in here. Um, yeah, got an absolute beauty. Okay, uh, Torn Place by Forward. Oh, he's on uh, the Eat Brain. You know, your Eat Brain. It's a record label for his Nero Funk. It's the hot, the hot funk. You know?
This is Torn Place by Forward. Shondi Eat Brain? No, she eat brain! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Timmy, you heard of the eat brain? Yes? No? Well, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, what have I done? There, that's the best, better. Uh, yeah, that's Forward by, uh, no, no, sorry, that's Torn Place by Forward. Uh, it's out now. Yeah, it's on, it's on an EP. I'm not immediately uh, aware, oh, it's the Torn Place EP. Look, okay, fine, 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 fine. Lobsters. Good. Uh, right, woman makes 120 grand a year selling nude pictures with help from her mom. Uh, there she is. Um, she couldn't afford, uh, couldn't afford fake tan for. She goes earns one hundred and twenty grand a year, yet she can only afford fake tan for her face. It's confusing, <laughs> isn't it? Can't you go get some actual sun? No, she's too busy taking more. pictures of her bum hole to sell online. Taken by her mum. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> really, she's got a special macro lens for it. Getting real close. Is the uh, the mum? Is she on that? Porn, child-friendly porn documentary by any chance? It wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me. Um, I don't know. She uh, she looks suitably mumsy. Yeah, they all yeah. do. Yeah, very mumsy. Um, <laughs> Those quite, are the worst quite, kinds. Quite soft, <laughs> you know. I mean, look, they're on very the outside, homely. It's on a facade. <laughs> yeah. God, they, but, but deep underneath it, they just want to make a pound note. Yeah. Um, okay. God, imagine pimping your own child like that. I find it deeply disturbing. I know she's an adult. Yeah. You know, like, how old is she? In her 20s? 22. 22. I mean, well, it sounds like an adult, but I remember when I was at 22, I was a complete twat. Yeah, I would say I was a child until I was about 32. I'm still kind of a child now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't feel I'm fully responsible for my actions. I'm no. about 80%. Once I hit 40, I'll br- no, once I have a child, then I'll be prepared to take 100% of responsibility for my actions. Until I mean, then, I'm a mum's responsibility. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> at this point, I think about having a pet, but I, I don't think I could. Well, the pet I breeds pet, responsibility, yeah, as does but, a child, or is supposed to. Yeah, but I think a pet rock is just all I, about all I can handle at the minute. Yeah? Yeah. Stick insect? No, it no, lives. Too much, okay, yeah, yeah, fine, it's breathing. I might end up killing it. Well, there are all sorts of living microbes and bacteria on a rock. I might so get a tardigrade, start with that. A what? A tardigrade. What's that? It's like microbe, like, Oh, you know, okay. The survive sea monkeys? In any, they survive in any climate. So. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that can survive after the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mum, can you please help me take nude pictures to sell online? Isn't a request many of us have made. That's not enough of us have made. Let's, <laughs> let's go down that route. We should all be doing this. Apparently. Come on, let's normalise it. We're all, we all have to do it. We all have to say that it's not only okay, but it's great. <laughs> uh, however, this bizarre dynamic has worked for Beth uh, Spibby. Spibby. Hmm. Yeah. Spell that? S-P-I-B-Y. Interesting. Spibby. Uh, who now makes 120 bags a year from her nudes having enlisted the help of her mother. Is that before or after tax? I, I will go out on a limb and say she's not paying tax. I'm just going just gonna <laughs> to put that out there. I just would say it's worth checking her receipts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the 22-year-old uh, used to work at Marks and Sparks, but now she's packed it all in and got her accountant mum. Okay, she probably does pay tax then. Uh, Jane, 53. <laughs> See, look, I told you they were always about the pound notes. Her mum's an accountant. She's mm. found a niche in the market. And, uh, well, I wouldn't call pimping a niche, but okay. No, right, yeah, fair enough. Uh, middle class pimping. <laughs> there, okay, now she has amassed a large online fan base and can afford to pay a. Oh, she can now afford to pay a professional photographer. Uh, but Beth from Addenshaw, Greater Manchester, said her mum still mucks in oh. and helps when, when I don't need know if be. Muck is the right word there. <laughs> she said, when I first started, she used to take them all. Every day. Initially, it was my mum who took all the pictures, even the raunchy ones. I was in my underwear and topless. It became more explicit the more comfortable I got. Whenever I need an extra photo, she is happy to get the camera out and take a pic. She obviously doesn't do anything too explicit, 
because that would be crossing the line. That or her mum's dead inside and incest is lit in that family. Ah! God, you've always got to take it too far, haven't you? It could be. I'm not the one stripping off on my mum, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, but the line here seems pretty blurred. Yeah, Robin Thicke was crossing right. Crossing the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was on about. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want it. Oh God! Oh, yeah. cringe. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I mean, yeah, but the, the, the line has been pushed quite considerably back. I mean, so what it seems like there are there are specific apps now that you can get on, and basically you just post a few free ones, get them hooked, mm. and then they start people start selling in your messages, and you start doing more like um. Uh, uh bespoke, should we say? Catering to the bespoke market, people who want a particularly individual nude, and like, is it like? Do you think like the mum's going to be taking pictures of like the ones where she wants like some dude's name written around her bum hole or something? Like, mum going to be right getting in there and I spread him a bit more. Like, just take it, mum. Just take the picture. I don't, darling. I'm not sure I'm about this. Trying to get a good angle. Look, it's hard to get really good lighting. Dude's paying there. 125 quid for this. Will you come on? We need a macro lens. <laughs> God. Um, if you think you recognise her, you might recall her appearance on a three-part documentary about KFC called oh. Billion Dollar Chicken Shop. Alternatively, she may seem familiar if you watch Shipwrecked. Okay, she was on Shipwrecked. Great. Or it could be that you recognise her from OnlyFans, the site uh, which she makes her money from. I'm thinking of getting snips up on OnlyFans. Uh, someone did donate a couple of quid through the sh- through the super chat on YouTube nice. in exchange for a picture of Wesley's undercarriage, which I sent them by DM. It's not bad actually. <laughs> Two quid for a picture of look. If you want, <laughs> come on, couple of quid through the super chat. That's how you're going to pay for your app, Will. Yeah, come on, go get it paid for somehow, haven't I? <sighs> Christ, no, it's not going to pay for itself. Um, Beth says she now employs someone to manage her website with her duties mainly comprising of satisfying odd requests and withdrawing cash as and when she pleases. Mm. Tough life. Mm. She said she posts the pictures and replies to the messages for me. What, your... your oh, your, empl- your employee. Uh, I don't really have to do anything to do with the website. I pay someone to do it for me. It's quite ideal. They message me and tip me extra. Well, now everyone knows that it's not even you replying to the messages. So why are they going to tip me extra if they think I deserve it? The bummel's real, though. Yeah. (laughs) But for how long? (laughs) I should be getting a butt double like Brie Larson. (laughs) Does she have a butt double? (laughs) Apparently so. Uh, uh, Feminism. Yay. (laughs) Yeah. I, it's totally naked. I use toys. I do solo strip teasers here and there. Whatever the customer wants. But Whatever the customer wants. Porn's free. Why? Uh, well, you know, this is it's the more, like I said, it's the bespoke market. Bespoke. Bespoke. Couture. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's fine. Get, you know, crack on. I uh, <laughs> kind of <laughs> exercising that female privilege, though, you know, like I don't think I'd be able to do this. <laughs> Hot girl privilege. Come on. Like, there's there's no higher privilege. If you female, like you could probably do it if you shout, it's ma'am, while you're doing it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do videos <laughs> sake. <laughs> I do videos in the shower. I've been quite explicit before. I would do dildo reviews and I would use different dildos on camera and review them. Uh thanks for getting me into this, mum. Uh people can <laughs> request things. Uh people like it if I moan their name, for example. I just draw out the money when I want, every three or four days. Uh as for how she spends the money. Beth said most of it goes on shopping. She's probably still living at her mum's. Probably doesn't even have to pay any rent. She's absolutely loaded. She said, I spent a lot of it. Uh, I think I bought the same pair of trainers in 12 covers. They were Adidas. They are awful, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, late stage capitalism has gone too far. Yeah. This is, uh, I mean, <laughs> where does this fall on the political spectrum? Like, to bottom right? Is full of society on that spectrum. For I said maybe, uh, yeah, d- d- yeah. So the closer you get to the edge, the more likely society is to collapse. Basically, just try, just try and keep things in the centre circle. Come on, guys, it's not stray too close to the edges. It's not a jigsaw puzzle. We don't have to start with the edges. Christ on a bike. Uh, well, God bless her. You know she's hustling again. If she could stretch to some um, <laughs> stretch. 
So, <laughs> God, if she could stretch to buying some fake tan for the rest for more than just the face. I don't, look, I'm criticizing women's appearance. I'm so sorry. I'm a patriarchal oppressor. Um, but ultimately, she's, you know, she's making fucking she's making more money than money. I am from sending pictures of her bum hole. So yeah, she probably doesn't care. Probably not that bothered, is she? No. I presume. Um, well, okay. Good, good stuff. Good work if you can get it. Yeah, quite. I, I just don't think I can, though. No. It's not my gig. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, maybe I could get it on the sort of lad market, on the gay scene, but, you know, it's the pink pound. Come on, there's money to be made. Could do. You know, I mean, how much, How good do I want the app to be? Pretty good. So maybe I'll have to, uh, you know... Sell your soul? Pony up. Hey, Among yeah. other things. Uh, yeah, so it's more sell my hole. No! <laughs> Jesus! It's only 10.30 in the morning. Why, why must you cheapen all of, all of these things? You this keep is... inviting me back. <laughs> You're asking for it. Oh, God. Uh, right. In... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to play some music now while yeah. I just cringe myself to death. Please. Uh, this is Intercepting uh, by Crefect. <laughs> bit of a temper tantrum this tune isn't it mm. I like it I don't think we can lower the tone too much further. I'm not sure it's entirely possible. Uh, there are some good bits, good more bits on this Scottish porn, uh, <laughs> Scottish <laughs> porn hub searches uh, <laughs> nugget though. It's a bit rascal, that one. A little, little bit naughty. A bit digy. A bit pokey. No, I mean. No, I mean. Intercepting. Yeah, it's Intercepting by Crefect. Uh, it's on You So Fat Records. <laughs> Oh, lovely stuff. <laughs> lovely stuff. Well, let's have a little bit of a palate cleanser. <clears throat> um, now, I've this is one of the most coffee and meme stories I've seen in recent times, certainly in recent weeks. 
Man accidentally shoots himself after throwing gun at cockroach to kill it. Now, what makes it very coffee memes is that he threw the gun inside of a shoe. <laughs> uh, so this is when shoe throwing goes wrong, basically. A man accidentally shot himself after he threw his gun at a cockroach in an attempt to squash the insect, police say. The unnamed 50-year-old man told police in Detroit, Michigan, uh, that he tried to kill the bug on Tuesday morning by throwing a shoe at it, only for a revolver hidden inside it to go off and send a bullet flying in his direction. This is America. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> How not to shoot throw? Yeah, so listen, guys, just as a sort of public service announcement, I am saying if you do, this is more for the American uh, listeners. Um, don't, if you're going to keep, don't keep guns in shoes yeah. because you never know when someone might come around your house, you know, double drop the nine, something like that. You just hurl the nearest item of footwear. Before you know it, everyone's dead. Why would you hide a gun in your shoe? Well, maybe it's in the closet. And it's just, you know, you're just going to stick it in there just in case. Under your bed. Just, you know, that's where you got it hidden just in case the King of England breaks into your house. <laughs> Starts wrecking up the place. <laughs> Starts pushing you around. That's why, the, that's why the Americans have guns, isn't it? Oh, just... Stop the King of England coming. That's what the Simpsons told me. <laughs> I'm still processing this story, to be honest. <laughs> After throwing his sneaker at the cockroach, the man's gun fell out and fired, striking him in the foot. Was it an Adidas sneaker? Doesn't say. No. Oh. Um, authority, it's, yeah, he's got 12 pairs in different colours. They're <laughs> awful. Uh, uh, look, she could recycle those shoes. She bought all them shoes. I mean, that's an easy video for, for the foot fetish lot, isn't it? Like, she could, you could easily get her money back on them. Maybe even, you know, trade up a little bit. I don't know why I'm giving her tips. She doesn't... It? You're not her mum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, authorities said that the man was taken to hospital and is in a stable condition following the incident. Uh, it is unclear whether or not he ended up successfully squashing the cockroach or not. <laughs> Definitely got away. <laughs> yeah. The Detroit Police Department say it has not been able to confirm the man's version of events. Oh, okay. All right, all right. This It could be, it could be shenanigans then, couldn't it? This is not the first time that Detroit has seen an injury caused by someone who went to extreme lengths to kill an insect. In January 2016, a man was badly burnt after he tried to light bed bugs on fire in his apartment. He used his inf he doused his infested furniture with alcohol and lit a cigarette, which he used to try and burn one of the tiny bugs, but ended up burning the couch and himself. The incident also destroyed four apartment units and caused water damage in more than 20 other units. <sighs> Nice one. Nice one, brother. Uh, in 2015, a woman named Sherry Young tried to use alcohol and a flame to kill bed bugs, uh, but ended up starting a massive fire that destroyed her 48, un d destroyed her 48 units in her apartment building. Five people, including the unnamed woman and three firefighters, were rushed to hospital. Man, people are fucking stupid, aren't they? Yeah, and... I've just had the realisation that no matter how careful you are in life, your neighbour might be a complete idiot. Yeah. And a liability and yeah. end up getting killed anyway. Yeah, that Jesus. is a concern, isn't it? That is a massive concern. <laughs> God, I'm... Oh. Yeah, that's it. It's like driving. It's like you can be... Everyone's like, I'm an absolutely amazing driver. It's like, well, you might be the best driver in the whole world. But everybody just, else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> careening across two lanes of traffic it's because they're i don't know listening to loud jungle music and hey, got carried don't blame away jungle for people's idiocy mate someone didn't they get arrested for driving under the influence of drum and bass a few years ago when there are various stories about it i'm sure i've covered it at least three times <laughs> yeah driving Some under the influence are quite intoxicating but yeah, you know. I, th I think he was listening to jump up i think that's why oh right that makes sense yeah yeah mm. <laughs> so it sort of makes sense now <laughs> Okay, right, what else have we got? Uh, Bradley Gunn, he's gone, so yeah. Oh yeah, Pensioner, this is a kind of, uh, this is a light-hearted one as well. Pensioner, 104, fulfills lifelong wish as she's arrested. Get her, they got her. Lock her up, lock her up. Thug life. Yeah, she's, <laughs> yeah, she's now 100% addicted to the game. Destroy all communists. Uh, well, that'll do. Mm, okay. uh, <laughs> some care home residents asked for a ride in a Rolls Royce, while others wanted a hand massage or to cuddle a poodle. And Broken Brow, <laughs> 107, 107, sorry, 104, um, 
I knew exactly what her wish was going to be, though. It was a bit more left field. The centenarian wanted to be arrested for the first time in her life, saying, I'm 104 and I've never been on the wrong side of the law. Uh, police were more than willing to make her dreams come true and fitted her up for a crime she did not commit. They planted uh, two kilos of A-grade heroin in her handbag and she will now be going to prison for the rest of her life. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. She's got, got a police hat on. She's in a wheelchair. She looks fucking good for 104. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Mm. What's her secret? What's your secret? Uh, and Not broke... getting arrested. Yeah, Head being on the right side of the law, basically. Mm. So let that be a lesson to all. You degenerates. <laughs> 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 degenerate criminal scumbags <laughs> like wondering why you look <laughs> like shit at 40 <laughs> uh, Anne Brokenbrow from Stoke Bishop Bristol declared her unconventional dream after being asked to fill out a wish by her care home the dementia sufferer uh, who lives in Stokely care home said my wish is to be arrested uh, the wish was then lifted at a co-op store and has now come true after policing teams in Stoke Bishop agreed to oblige uh Maybe when they arrested her, like, really hard bit of police brutality. Yeah, I'm picturing a SWAT team. Just yeah, like, just kicking like, down the door. Knee on the neck, really. Get your hands on your back! That's <laughs> Coming your in back. down on ropes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mrs. Brokenbrow, who previously worked at James Roberts and Son Manufacturers as a secretary, was put in cuffs and led to a police car where she sat in the front seat. I didn't put crims in the front seat. It's ridiculous. She's getting special treatment. Privilege. Yeah. Um, there it is. She's got very good handwriting, or I feel like maybe that's been written by... Hold on a second. I see a new twist here. Well, the handwriting is very neat, not the handwriting of a 104-year-old. No way. So she they was also, a secretary, though. Well, all right. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. But she was also a dementia sufferer. Oh. So I'm just wondering whether or not one of the care workers have done this as a laugh... Uh, and just gone, yeah, come on, Anne, you remember? You said she'd be a goody two-shoes. Maybe it's time you felt the long arm of the law. <laughs> Get her, boys. Oh, that's a more entertaining story. It makes like, oh, more what's, sense. What's going on here? Do you remember you said you wanted to be arrested? No. no. Oh, she's got dementia. She doesn't know what she's on about. She doesn't oh, know if she's coming no. or going. Get her in the van. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> it's possible. Uh... It, uh, Stokely Care Home is one of five in Bristol that is participating in the Wishing Washing Line initiative run by the Elderly People's Charity Active uh, uh, Alive Activities. Uh, lovely stuff. <sighs> right, let's have some more gross stuff. Um, what have we got? We've only got, we've only got five or so minutes left. Um, where are we? Okay, woman and mum, that's done. Um, okay, look, let's get into the uh, Scottish porn. People in Scotland are more likely to search for redheads and kilts on Pornhub. Uh, Pornhub Insights does exactly what it says on the tin, offers fascinating insights to the wanking preferences of particular demographics. God bless them. Where can you get... Uh... Oh, look, you can get them. There's a specific... Oh, it's just another lab Bible story. Oh, yeah, big increase in Red Dead Redemption porn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> The latest publication of Scot Scotland Insights is eye-opening, to say the least. Go back to the uh, Red Dead Redemption. What? <laughs> uh, gaming uh, Pornhub reports a huge increase in searches for Red Dead Redemption porn. And that's a thing. Apparently. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, it states Rule 34 of the internet, uh, which is the rule stating that if you can think it, there is porn of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cool. Good to know. Great. Just again, <laughs> another benefit of living in a free, open, liberal democracy. Um, categories viewed more in Scotland. Proportional difference in popularity compared to worldwide. 540% uh, higher search for British porn. 152% for smoking. 98% mature. 92% redhead. 43% lesbian. 42 bondage. 41 fetish. 40 vintage. 39 celebrity. And 32 MILF. Oh, lovely stuff. Uh, perhaps the most fascinating insight is revealed in the Categories Viewed More in Scotland section, which shows that redhead videos are 90% more popular than the rest of the world. Uh, among some of the popular ginger-themed search terms are redhead milf, 
Kevy Redhead, and Hairy Ginger Pussy. Oh, nice. Uh, mature videos are 98% more popular than in the rest of the world, while smoking videos are 152 more popular, 152% more popular. Uh, for those wondering if smoking uh, is some kind of smutty sex act that they've never come across in their innocent lives, then don't worry. You're not missing out. It's just someone smoking a cig while shagging. <laughs> Uh, getting way more niche still, it turns out that kilt-based porn searches are 152% more popular in Scotland than the rest of the world. That is shocking, isn't it? Because uh, who doesn't get all hot under the collar when they see a bit of kilt? It's pretty nationalist, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's that Scottish pride. Yeah. It's, uh... Can you blame them? Uh, no, I, I'm st- I still, I'm, I am, you know, I've said this many times, I still am enthused about the idea of build, rebuilding Hadrian's Wall. To just uh, keep them out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, within the realm of kilty porn searches uh, that we previously didn't know existed, Scottish men in kilts, kilt public, and under the kilt are some of the most popular. Uh, given the apparent popularity of kilt porn, I'll be pretty shocked, shocked if there isn't actual porn out there called under the kilt. Further fascinating insights are revealed on a regional basis by comparing the most popular categories within particular regions against the national average. Glasgow has been revealed to be the home of safe for work porn searches. Wow, which is 36% more popular than the uh, than the average in the city. Safe for work. Czech porn is 70, 17% more popular than average in Edinburgh than the rest of the country. Czech is in Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While the people of Sterling are sixty-eight percent more likely to visit Pornhub's pissing category, oh, gross. cracking, and sixty-five uh, percent more likely to visit the solo male category. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> see, it's nothing if not enlightening. Uh, like the majority of the world, Scotland's most searched-for term on Pornhub is lesbian. That's uh, that's amazing. That's not a Scottish thing, really, though. No, that's the worldwide most searched oh. porn term is lesbian. Right. Yeah. The unattainable, I guess. I guess, and also apparently women are uh, are very likely to search it, more likely to search it than men, apparently. Interesting. Yeah. No, I'm wrong. It, they women uh, women quite often search for gay uh, male gay porn because there are no women right. in it, so you then don't like compare yourself to them and like or their body or whatever this is what this is the explanation i heard of it on uh christina hoff summers podcast called the femsplainers good podcast would recommend um and yeah they had a load of other weird uh weird ones like that i can't, I can't remember off the top of my head oh. but yeah basically like it's it's really difficult to get like accurate sort of effectively scientific data on porn use and stuff um, other than from spying, well, no, other from other other than from actually from Pornhub and places like that, because the only people that tend to do research on it are like religious groups to prove that it is bad, or from groups trying to prove that it is good. So you get a very biased thing. Yeah. So, but Pornhub is uh, quite happy to release all the data. <laughs> I'll give you all big data. What was, uh, more people than ever are getting into cuckolding. Thank mm. you, Guardian. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, it was CNN. Oh, well, it's probably Guardian as well. Yeah, yeah. There's they big. Cuts. They wrote an article about why cuckolding is a good thing. Yeah, I just don't think you should let other people fuck your messes. I just yeah, think it's that's just n- it kind of defeats the purpose of yeah. them being your messes, doesn't it? Yeah, I uh, I mean you know everyone each to their own. Everyone's different and everything and and so on. But I, mm. I, I call me you know call me a, 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 tell me I have conservative views of relationships. But I, I yeah I don't know. I think there's probably other issues that need to be addressed if you want to hide in the cupboard while someone much more alpha than you comes round and like <laughs> gives your partner a real going over. <laughs> like I watch I just watch through the. From the, through the keyhole in the yeah. cupboard. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, good for yeah. you. God, God, God bless them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. Well, that makes you happy. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> right. Let's play this Jack Mirror bit again. It's nice. Uh, it's called Reset. Oh, I'm gonna have to sort of reset my brain. Yeah, me after too. All after all of this, this. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna watch. There's that. It's called like eye cleanse or eye bleach or something, and it's just pictures of kittens. 
puppies and is there a things. soul bleach yeah because oh. that needs to be a thing and i think i need to muck out my chakras <laughs> you know get them all you know clear all the gunk out and <laughs> sorted yeah just <laughs> sand them down <laughs> yeah Right, coming up after this at 11 on Threshold.fm is Ames MC's show. Two hours of fine, fine shoe throwers. And I believe he has Short on, on for a guest mix. So hang around. That's 11 until 1. You will not be disappointed. If you don't have the Threshold app, you can get it on the iPhone app store or the Android app store. Just head on over there. Or head on over to threshold.fm and get the relevant links from the website. This isn't perfect anymore. Reset by Jack Mira, sound now on Viper. Alright, just leaves me time to shout out the VIP list. A list of bad motherfuckers supporting the show and supporting Threshold.fm as a whole on Patreon. If you want your name on this list, shout it out at the end of every show. Head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash threshold.fm, or you can find a link on the support the station section of threshold.fm. And join the ranks of Oliver, Ho- Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonklaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, uh, Kieran R., Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J., Richard Patson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Boulard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heichelbeck, John Finnison, BDR Crew. Peter Blashford, Austin Grief Cooper, Genesee Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphreys, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Side Chance is actually superior with Roman <laughs> oh, Bass. Uh, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, Chris Breaks the Build, uh, Carissa Barthelson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Genvy, Flaxis, Alexander Cassidy, and Matt Wright. <laughs> Huh? It's a nice skippy little joint. Yeah. It's a hot joint. Yes. Now, uh, Squiff, you've got your, you've turned some, your t-shirts, your yeah, rather famous some, t-shirts. Um, I had some t-shirts left over, like four of them, and I decided to turn them into tote bags. Woo! Right? Because who doesn't love a tote bag, right? You're fucking right. Right. And, you know, you can be doing your weekly shop and, you know, still flex the print. Yeah. I think I'm going to retire these quite soon. Do you want to uh, show, oh, show, it show, it show, show it off, explain it? Uh, hold it still. There you go. Yep. That's it. Keep it there. So you've got the um, all London clubs that have sadly closed down, sadly departed, hidden plastic people, mass, fridge, uh, the Astoria Arena, uh, Bagley's, the end, matter. God, it's tragic, isn't it? I like, know, right? Turn mills, cable. Uh, Herbal, SE1, yeah, Jesus. Uh, have you still got them as t-shirts as well? I don't, oh. but I've turned them into tote bags, but Woo! I'm getting some hoodies done Okay. with the same print, and then I'm going to retire this artwork for a bit because I've got another two lists of clubs that 
I'm going to turn into artwork. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I know the two. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And um, yeah, so after the hoodies, I think I'm just going to start working on the next ones. Mm -hmm. But I've got four of these. They're up on the website. And yeah. There you go. Was yeah. it rockofeyeclothing.co.uk? Rockofeyeclothing.co.uk. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm bad at plugging stuff. <laughs> Terrible. That's fine. I'll but, stick um, a yeah, I'll stick a link in the YouTube description for yeah, this. Yeah, and also um, it's got like a little metal loop. So if the tie isn't exactly your gig, you can change it to, you know, a silk scarf, something else, a noose, whatever, whatever yeah, takes your fancy, fancy. really. <laughs> nice. And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Right, thank you for listening, everyone. I'll be back at 3 p.m. for Rankings Records this afternoon. I just playing the best drum and bass has ever been pressed to vinyl. You know, nice. nothing more, nothing less. You know, I keep it simple. Just the best drum and bass on flat earth. Know what I mean? Right, I love you all. See you soon. Square, thanks for coming on the show again. Yeah, thanks for having me. God bless you. Fine again. God bless Robin.